we have Thank to cross you. live to the Lagos Business School where uh, Adewale Wale Adeyemo and the Deputy Treasury Secretary of the United States is giving an address on forging ties between the U.S. and Nigeria. Thank you so much, our guests, for joining us. President Biden is committed to a strong U.S.-Nigeria relationship built on shared values and mutual benefit. Our administration recognizes something that you know very well, that the importance of the 200 million Nigerians and their economic success and how that is important not only to Nigeria, but to the region and the continent and the global economy. Nigeria, as you know it, is the largest economy in Africa and will be the fourth most populous country in the world by 2050. Nigeria's economy and social impact can be felt well beyond your borders with a diaspora that has spread across the world, bringing with them the unbounded creativity and innovation that you find in every city and village in this great country. As a child of the diaspora myself, I am humbled to stand here in front of you, Adewale Adeyama, as the first U.S. Nigerian-American U.S. Deputy Secretary of the Treasury. More than four decades ago, my parents left a very different Nigeria to get an education in search of opportunity for their young family, long before an educational institution like this one existed. They raised us with a deep and abiding love for Nigerian culture, and the struggles of a people that fought to be free of colonialism and the yoke of dictatorship. A people filled with so much potential, but with too few opportunities. In so many ways, Nigeria is a different country today than the one they left more than 40 years ago. But progress on expanding economic opportunity has come more slowly than any of us hoped for. I am here today to talk about how the United States can be your partner in accelerating progress on the economic forums Nigeria needs. I am here because we know that a strong and prosperous Nigeria is not only good for you, it is also good for the United States of America. I am here because unlocking Nigeria's economic success can transform not just a country, but an entire continent. And as you know well, this is a critical moment in Nigeria, where decisive action by your government and the determination and shared efforts of the Nigerian people can create changes needed to unlock an, the unrealized opportunity of Africa's most populous nation. Despite what some say, Nigeria's greatest resource is not its oil. It is the Nigerian people, those of you sitting here with me today. Nigerians have built leading companies around the world, like Dangote Group, Globacom, and Zenith Bank, just to name a few. Nigerians have made significant contributions to culture, from Wale Soyunka to Chinya Achabe. Nigerian musicians and films are heard and watched around the world. And I'm excited to tour Ogidi Studios this evening to see one of the many places where this art is made. Today, one of Nigeria's greatest opportunities is the fact that around three in five Nigerians is, a, is under the age of 25, creating the possibility for Nigeria to reap a tremendous demographic dividend as the population of working people in this country grows. That possibility lies with you, the students here at the Lagos Business School creating jobs and access to opportunity for the tens and thousands of students here and your peers all over this country is essential to Nigeria's success. In addition to being on the right side of demographics, Nigeria is also blessed with an array of natural resources and innovative companies. It is clear from my conversations with investors and foreign companies that they are eager to invest in Nigeria to help grow a diversified economy that can meet your needs. We know that with the right macroeconomic framework, Nigeria can be a destination of choice for foreign capital, including capital from the United States. 
While demographics and capital can fuel the Nigerian economic boom, small and medium-sized enterprises will sustain your growth. The types of businesses that are created by, by the graduates of this business school, but by Nigerians all over the country, are critical to your economic success. There are more than 40 million micro, small, and medium-sized businesses in this country, which employ more than 80% of Nigerians. These businesses represent the beating heart of the Nigerian economy. In order for these businesses to thrive, they need go government policy to go from being the problem to providing the solution. Nigerians are at the heart of the innovation that is blossoming all over Africa. The question is how do you unlock that innovation? From arts to technology, the economy is more diverse here today than even a few years ago. Tomorrow, I'm looking forward to touring the Viberium Valley and meeting with leaders in venture capital, fintech, healthcare, and more. These firms have the ability to drive growth here in Nigeria, but they require an ecosystem of public-private partnership that fosters those investments. This new administration and the people I've met with, from students to entrepreneurs to major business leaders, all share a common understanding of the path forward that creates prosperity for the Nigerian people. And I'm here to say that the United States stands ready and eager to partner with the Nigerian people and government in your quest to build a better future. But before I talk specific, about specific areas in which we are keen to partner, let me first take a minute to discuss why I have faith in our partnership. Our countries, as you know, have enjoyed decades-long relations that has grown since the democracy returned to Nigeria in 1999. The heart of this relationship is our people. America is home to more than half a million Nigerian-born American citizens and permanent residents. This vast diaspora community brings rich culture, a penchant for entrepreneurship, and a wide-ranging economic and social contributions to the United States of America. Thousands of Nigerians study each year in the United States, including through educational exchange programs like the Fulbright and Humphrey Fellowship and the Mandela Washington Fellowship that seeks to foster the next generation of African leaders. Thousands of United States citizens also call Nigeria home. We also have a number of American companies from different sectors that have made significant investments in Nigeria, from Google to General Electric and many more. Today, the United States is one of the largest investors in Nigeria, and Nigeria stands as America's second largest African trading partner. In addition to our country's trade, the United States government provided Nigeria with over $1 billion in investments last, assistance last year, helping to support Nigerians with access to health care and reducing food insecurity. But in order for us to make progress, it is important for us to focus on reform. And there are, of course, many reasons why the United States remains committed to these partnerships and the reforms that Nigeria needs to make from our people-to-people -people relations, to our shared values, to our common economic and security interest. I want to spend the remainder of my remarks highlighting some of the steps needed for the type of growth that creates economic opportunity for the Nigerian people. First, Nigeria needs a stable Naira. You stop into any small business or market and you will hear shop owners and customers bemoaning the lack of a stable currency. Unifying Nigeria's foreign exchange rate will also create the kind of macroeconomic stability that is essential to attracting foreign investment. We commend the difficult steps your government has already taken to accomplish this goal. The path to unification is not an easy one, as everyone is experiencing, but going backwards would be even worse. Second, the government needs to articulate and implement a credible fiscal strategy that will provide the resources to make critical investments. I recognize the decision to end fuel subsidies is hard for many Nigerian households, but it was an important early step 
to create resources the government can use to invest in fiscal and digital infrastructure, education, and a strong small business environment. There is nowhere this need is greater than the agricultural industry, which despite the digital revolution going on in Nigeria, remains Nigeria's top employer. Its full potential, of course, is held back by issues like access to fertilizers, limited use of new technology, access to water and land, and the availability of credit and high market entry cost. It is important to note the need for economic reforms does not demand indifference to the pain caused by this transition to ordinary Nigerians. This is why partners like the World Bank and African Development Bank are committed to working with your government to provide resources and advice to help smooth this transition for the Nigerian people. The third factor for growth is rooting out corruption and the perception of corruption in the business environment. One thing that was highlighted to me was the unique ethics program that is taught here at the Lagos Business School. The importance of making sure that business is done in a way that is consistent and ethical is critical, not only to Nigeria and the Nigerian economy, but also critical to the Nigerian people. I know that the Nigerian people are willing to make sacrifices in the service of progress, but they also have a legitimate fear that corruption and mismanagement will dash their hopes that the benefits of these reforms will enrich the people rather than the powerful. I know that Nigerians agree with what Wale Shoyenka said. It is not fair to those who fight corruption that they have to fight the aggressiveness, the impunity of the corrupt. Creating economic opportunity will require a government-wide drive to address these fears by shining a light on corruption, holding people accountable, and taking meaningful steps to improve the business climate. For example, Nigeria is a hotbed of digital entrepreneurs. Taking simple steps like moving government functions online so Nigerians can apply for business licenses and visas using their smartphones and computers will help improve services, productivity, and reduce opportunities for fees to go into, the pocket, into pockets rather than government coffers. This new government also has the ability to fight skepticism by making reforms that will allow Nigerian people to better understand how federal, state, and local resources are used. Fourth and finally, is protecting the integrity of Nigeria's financial system. The cowardly kidnapper, corrupt official, and fraudster all have something in common. Laundering their money is critical to their success. Taking steps to make sure the banking system is more secure will help reduce the ability of criminals, terrorists, and others to illicitly use the Nigerian financial system to their benefit. I applaud the leadership of the current administration in committing to work with the Financial Action Task Force to tackle money laundering and terrorist financing. Our government stands ready to help work with, the, with them to take these steps as quickly as possible. Overall, President Biden and the Biden administration believe de deeply in the importance of deepening the relationship with Nigeria because we know that ultimately it is in America's interest as much as it is in Nigeria's interest. And we know that the reality is that these reforms cannot come fast enough for the Nigerian people. But at the same time, the opportunity has never been greater. Your government is pursuing difficult and bold reforms. Your businesses and founders are bursting with ambition and new ideas. And the students I talk to are optimistic and demanding. You all are ready to lead Nigeria into a new chapter. And the United States looks forward to being a partner as you build an economy that works for all Nigerians. With that, I'm eager to hear from all of you and to have a conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you um, very much, uh, Mr. Niemo. We were delighted, well, certainly I was, to hear you speak not only about the reforms that you expect will take place, but also 
about what I deem the commitments of the Biden administration to work together just so that we can create more opportunities for growth between both countries. And now I believe that a number of us in this room may have questions for you. I certainly have, as you spoke, I did put down a couple of questions. So I will begin and then I will invite others in the audience to ask um, questions. You know, you, you spoke about the arts and the creative um, industry. And I recall that uh, one of the key highlights of the African Leaders Summit hosted by President Biden uh, last December, I believe, was the potential of Africa's creative industry in creating jobs and um, contributing to sustain the economic uh, growth. When we look at the statistics of the current uh, contribution to the Nigerian economy, it's in the region of uh, 53.5 billion US dollars. That's tremendous. And uh, therefore, I wonder in what ways do you think that the creative sectors, such as film, music, arts that you referenced, can spur mutually beneficial trade and investments on the continent, and indeed reinforce stronger ties with the global Africa in diaspora? You also mentioned the number of Nigerians in diaspora. So, what can be done in this regard? So, let me first say that what's happening in Nigeria is tremendous. For a long time, the greatest export that Nigeria had were the things that were found in the ground. Today, I would say the greatest exports that Nigeria has is its culture, through arts and film, and the fact that it touches not just people here in Africa, but um, you can watch Nigerian films in America, in Asia, in Latin America. And the truth is that Nigeria needs to harness more of the economic value that comes from this. But the important thing that those of you who are here at the business school know is that Nigeria cannot be solely dependent on any one industry. That's why one of the key areas of focus needs to be on digital infrastructure. The idea being that you need to build the digital infrastructure that will not only support these creatives who are adding a great deal of economic values, but also support your banking sector and all the other sectors of the economy, including small and medium-sized enterprises. Yesterday, I was shopping uh, in Lagos, and the thing that was the most surprising was that when the teller was going to ring me up, Instead of just simply taking my card and allowing it to tap a device and be able to charge it, they had to write in a book and note down what I was buying because it was clear that there, there wasn't a computer system to talk to each other. Those simple transactions and making sure those things are digitally captured can improve their ability to keep records, to send those records to a bank that then allows the bank to be in a position to build a record that will allow them to make loans. So a big part of this for the United States is helping to invest in that digital infrastructure through things like our Development Finance Corporation that's made investments here in Nigeria into fintechs and also into financial firms, but also into other firms that are helping to build out an infrastructure that will allow Nigerian firms, be they creative, be they small, medium-sized enterprises, to benefit from the digital transformation that's happening here. And as I mentioned in my speech, it shouldn't only be the private sector. Nigeria's government should also become digitized because it will reduce uh, frictions that many businesses face when dealing with the government and it will also improve the ability of government to provide services to people going forward. So a big piece for us is making sure that we work with your government, but also with your private sector, to make investments in the digital infrastructure of the future. Great. Thank you very much. I will now invite questions from the audience. Uh, if you would like to ask a question or make a comment, could you indicate by raising your hand, please? Thank you. I do believe we have a microphone, so that's one. Uh, uh, two and then three, all on the same row. Okay, do we have a mic? Could you step down, please, towards the middle? Thank you. Just in front of the camera. Okay, so there's two gentlemen there. Please. Um, and please, if you could keep your questions brief, uh, just questions, not a speech. Uh, just introduce yourself and then go directly to the question, please. Good afternoon, Good afternoon everybody. Good afternoon. Um, I must first, first and foremost comment, uh, uh, sorry, pardon me, comment uh, Deputy Secretary of State, um, Treasury, uh, Mr. Wally, the for the wonderful exposition. The question I would like to ask is, um, Nigeria is in the need of, uh, you know, support from the United States. Uh, you know, investment can, can only thrive in a, in a country where there is a semblance of security, like you also alluded to. 
What is uh, the United States uh, uh, plan to assist us with, uh, you know, solving our, you know, uh, solving our security crisis as, as it were? Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I suggest we take three questions each time and then we can answer. Sir. Yeah, my, my name is Antonio Sari Brown. I will work with uh, Bloomberg. My question is around the Naira. You've advocated for a stable Naira. Uh, the, we need dollars to have a stable Naira. U.S. has the dollars. How do we get it from you guys? <laughs> Anthony, you're not suggesting that they dash us the dollars, are you? <laughs> okay, and then also, lady, uh, yes, please, just on the same row. Yes, please. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much, Sir Wali Adeyemo, for your speech. My name is Ibere Okonkwo. I'm the founder of My Care Body, which is a mental health startup that is um, dedicated at making people live their best lives by providing them with quality mental health services through therapy and trainings. Now, my question is this. How can we encourage more collaborations between the U.S., and mental health initiatives in Nigeria to help support mental health solutions, given the fact that the environment in which we live in is not very comfortable and accepting to mental health discussions. There's a lot of stigmatization going on. There's a lot of absolute lack of awareness. I've been running my company for three years now, and I'm really open to what, you know, solutions in terms of collaboration that you'll be sharing. Having been a beneficiary of the MWF, I understand firsthand that the U.S. is really interested in collaborations like this, but I would really like to know more practically how this can be done. Thank you. Thanks, Saber. Okay. So, would you like to answer this? Yeah, so three very different questions. Let me try and answer each one of them and start from the end. And I think that you're right that one of the most important things is access, frankly, to uh, mental health services because it's lacking. Um, it's lacking because of underinvestment in healthcare. One of the things that we're doing in the U.S. government is the, I mentioned the billion dollars of investment that we've made. Much of that money has been in healthcare and helping to build up a healthcare ecosystem. But what we also know is that in order for healthcare to reach the people often who need it most, it has to be done in innovative ways. That's why what you're doing is so impressive. You're creating a startup that gives people access to health care on their own terms, um, especially mental health care, which you're right, there are, um, and it's not just here, but I think all over the world, there are types of cultural barriers that make that difficult. And part of what we want to do is make sure that we're investing in the ecosystem that supports startups like your own. By, invent, by investing in fintechs and in financial institutions and doing partnerships with financial institutions that will allow them to provide loans and capital to firms like your own in order for them to grow because what Nigeria needs is to make sure that small startups turn into larger startups that then have the ability to hire more Nigerians and build out the economy. I think it's encouraging that, met, that almost half of the unicorns that were found in Africa have been found here in Nigeria over the last few years. And the question though is how do you make sure that companies like your own get access to the capital you need to grow to provide not only mental health services but all kinds of services to the Nigerian economy. When I think about what's happening, one of the biggest challenges you face though is that right now Nigeria lacks a macroeconomic framework that is going to help bring more foreign direct investment, including dollar-based foreign direct investment into the country. I think the early steps that the government has taken are important in terms of what they've done in terms of fiscal policy and what they've done in terms of trying to unify the exchange rate, but more needs to be done and they recognize that. And I think the truth is that as companies around the world and the private sector becomes more comfortable with their approach, you would expect that Nigeria would be a destination for foreign direct investment because of companies like your own, but also because Nigeria has such a huge talent pool when it comes to labor and opportunity. So if we are in a position where the government can develop a macroeconomic framework that demonstrates a commitment to fundamentals, the expectation has to be that over time, Nigeria's economy will thrive, and that will include bringing in more foreign direct investment that will increase the amount of dollars um, in your economy. Ultimately, security is a challenge that Nigeria um, has to deal with. And there's two different security challenges, but we're very invested in working with Nigeria to address them because the insecurity that exists in Nigeria doesn't remain only within your borders. Um, we know that to be the case. That's why America is interested in both 
in a strategic and economic partnership with Nigeria, but we also want to make sure that we're making investments in communities all over Nigeria in order to demonstrate to people that there are economic opportunities in their communities that take them away from doing, doing actions that um, hurt them and hurt their communities. So part of this is making sure that we're investing in the security relationship between our two countries, which I know that when Secretary Blinken was here, he had an opportunity to speak to. Um, as you know, um, or you may not know, President Biden had a chance to see the new, your new president on the sidelines of the G20 and talk about the security situations in the region and how we can deepen our relationships. We look forward to continuing those conversations because we know that in many ways, security and economics are very tied together. Great, and then there was a question of how the U.S. can bring the dollars that we need to Nigeria. Yeah, and I think that comes down to, I think, the macroeconomic framework, frankly, and making sure that the government continues to take steps to demonstrate that they're building a macroeconomics framework that's going to lead to more investment dollars coming into Nigeria. Ultimately, the type of dollars and investment you want in Nigeria is foreign direct investment that comes from companies that want to invest in the economy and help invest in the Nigerian people. That will happen as your, na your macroeconomic framework comes into, full, comes into full development and companies feel comfortable putting money here. I think one of the challenges in talking to both Nigerian firms but also to American firms has been the fact that when they put money here, it's often trapped here due to the policies that have been put in place by the previous administration. Finding a macroeconomic framework that makes sure that you have safety and soundness for your financial institutions but also allows capital to flow in and flow out will allow Nigeria's foreign direct investment to grow. And ultimately that's what you need because you want to make sure that the money that comes into Nigeria is money that helps accelerate growth in the economy because ultimately what people need is they both need capital but they also need consumers. And the consumers are here, the key for them is making sure they have access to the money they need to grow their businesses. Um, thank you. You know, in answering this question, um, the second question you had, um, again, spoken about the need for using tech as well as digital transformation in order to pursue that growth and indeed in your comments. But I'd like to ask, uh, what is the U.S. government doing uh, in terms of supporting Nigeria's growing tech sector? Since you know, you've spoken about it and a number of the uh, comments have been around that as well. And through our Development Financial Corporation, we're making investments in Nigeria that are supporting the tech industry. But in addition to our government, our companies are investing here in Nigeria because they see it as a true opportunity. From Meta to Microsoft to Google to Netflix, they're setting up offices here. They're making investments in Nigeria because they know that ultimately that is good for their business, but it's also good for Nigeria. So from our standpoint, what we want to do is make sure that the investments we're making through the United States government are useful in unlocking growth and potential in the, in the Nigerian economy. And we're seeing that there's a great deal of potential because the private sector from the United States and around the world wants to come here to do business. In order for that to be successful, my point is you have to invest in digital infrastructure. Ultimately, if there isn't access to high-speed internet, if there isn't access to information throughout the country, it's going to limit the potential of the economy to grow. So in addition to investing in companies and helping them grow, we want to make sure that Nigeria has the infrastructure they need, both physical and digital, to be able to take advantage of the entrepreneurs and creativity in your economy. Great. Thank you. A uh, couple more questions on the side, please. Could I have the mic on the side, please? Uh, Somebody has grabbed the mic already, so <laughs> since she has it, I will invite her to ask a question and then I'll come over to you, sir. Please. Hello, um, good afternoon. My name is Yeti Ogunubi. Um, I run um, YD Company, a PR and branding agency. Um, my question is um, how can we leverage the US Nigeria economic relation to expand my business and attract more entrepreneurial opportunities? I also face the challenge of we having an um, international client and then sending money to us is always an issue as well in terms of exchange, in terms of even getting the money on time. That's my question. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Could you pass the mic to the gentleman in front, please? I don't know who's 
um, with the mic, but I would like that you follow my directions. Okay, the uh, mic is here. Uh, could you pass it to the gentleman? His hand has been up for a while. I'll come back to you in the time. Thank you. Yes, please. Good afternoon, and nice having you. Thank you for, for being here. And I'll just go straight to, to my point. My name is Afala Bioke, the Managing Director of Global InfoSwift, and we're working with Central Bank to put what we call the regulatory sandbox, because the biggest challenge we have, okay, especially with the fintechs, is regulatory risk. Central Bank, we're working with Central Bank, also with the US company, to put what we call the regulatory sandbox, so that fintechs can actually test you know, their innovation before it's being endorsed. But the biggest challenge is they're talking to a lot of uh, companies in the US for direct investment into Nigeria, but a lot of them are having big, big challenges. When you look at how much um, investment in terms of the global amounts that's, uh, that, that's available from the US, last year we only had about 20 to 25% investment into our fintechs. All right, so how can we make sure that it's easier for a lot of these fintechs to access this direct investment? Because Central Bank is putting a lot of things in place to make it easier for them to be endorsed. But the challenge is the US companies are truly not coming forth supporting a lot of these fintechs. So what can we do to ensure that that, you know, that process is a bit smooth? Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Um, can I take the gentleman at the top, please? There was a mic somewhere there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, is there a mic headed his way? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chancellor, for calling me. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Secretary, for, for being here. Um, I just want to ask one question, and, and I'll make some comments to try and explain that question. Uh, in brief. Yes, I, please. Thank you. The question is, sir, how bullish is the American government, what is the appetite of the American government in helping Nigeria overcome its current very intense, severe, economic problems. You've, you alluded to it in your speech about um, unification of exchange, etc., stable Naira, security, a few people have talked about that. And someone made a comment that sounded like a joke, but I think the single issue that we should be talking to America about now is to help us stabilize this economy by giving us some kind of huge $50 billion, for instance, 10-year free loan, free interest rate. Because FDI will not come now, the government is in trouble. We probably have $3 billion in, a, in, 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 in reserves. Um, your government has over $30 trillion in debt. Adding $50 billion to it won't, won't scratch the surface. But that will transform this economy, stabilize our Naira, in exchange for whatever you want, including our COO for the, for the, for the country. I sincerely do hope, sir, that before Unger finishes, you are going back to America to take back this message to our president, who you are, is your president in, in a way as well. If Nigeria doesn't get help, no matter what Mr. Kadosu and Mr. Wiley, uh, oh, your namesake, whatever they do, this economy is slipping. Multidimensional poverty is going through the roof. We were able to get here because the roads are free. Subsidy has been removed. People are unable to put their cars on the road. We can sit in this nice and dandy hair conditioned room and tell ourselves these lovely things. American corporations are slow, generally. But if you take that advantage, it will be a win-win for all of us. But we need a 10-year horizon. So how bullish you. is your government in okay. dealing with this problem? Great. Thank, Thank you. you. So you have uh, the questions. Two are related. Thank you. America is bullish on Nigeria because of the Nigerian people. And I think the truth is that uh, the reforms that the new administration put in place um, right after they came in office were long needed, as I think everyone in this room would acknowledge. But uh, the truth is that more needs to be done. 
and we all acknowledge that to be true. And we've made very clear to the government we want to be their partner as they think through how those reforms are made, but not just the United States of America, uh, also the World Bank, the African Development Bank, and other international institutions. I know that before I came, I spoke to the president of the World Bank, who has been here in senior administration and is ready to work with them in terms of trying to help as they try to ameliorate what is to the point that you made, which is um, this transition is causing pain for Nigerians. And you need to make sure that as you're making the transition, which will take longer than anyone wants, that you are taking steps to make sure that you are helping those Nigerians who are feeling it the most. But I think the, the most important point, I think all three questions are related to each other, is that the, the, you need to put reforms in place that allows people to bring capital into this country in a way that w where they feel secure that they're going to be able to take their money out when they choose to and to continue to make investments. There is no quick, easy solution to those challenges. I want to be honest about that. That's what true partners are. But ultimately, we know that by helping to make investments in Nigeria's economy and your businesses, especially your small businesses, we can help build a type of ecosystem that will help Nigeria be successful over time. The last few years have been quite difficult in terms of the economy. We faced COVID, we faced Russia's war in Ukraine, you faced an exchange rate that was um, oftentimes hard to understand in, in terms of the policies that were put in place by the central bank. What the administration is committed to doing is taking the right steps. The question now is what else they do going forward, and we're committed to being their partners and doing that in the United States of America, including continuing with the assistance that we've been providing over the last several years and looking for new ways to work with the government. My colleague Scott Nathan was here just a few months ago from our Development Finance Corporation to talk about deals we can do here in, the, in Nigeria's economy, and we want to continue to do that work going forward, not only because it's in Nigeria's interest, but because we know that it's also in America's interest going forward. Um, thank you very much. I know that I mean, there are several hands up. Unfortunately, in the interest of time, we're not going to be able to take any uh, further um, questions, uh, which is a pity because I, you can see by the number of hands up uh, that um, you know, more engagement and more questions um, would have arisen. But I do hope that there will be other opportunities uh, for you to engage with the Deputy uh, Secretary of State in order to have your questions um, answered. Uh, but I'd like to thank you for your responses given to the questions that were asked. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chancellor. And thank you very much, uh, Deputy Secretary. Um, we want to say thank you also to the officials from the embassy who are here. And of course, this program would have been a flop without all of you here. I especially want to say thank you to all our alumni. I think we have about six, over 6,000 alumni. That's Lagos Business School. And easily. You've been watching a live broadcast from the Lagos Business School where Adewale Wali Adeyemo, Deputy Treasury Secretary of the United States, has been given an address on forging ties between the US and Nigeria. For Nigeria to attract growth and foreign investment, Mr. Adeyemo says the country needs a stable Naira, credible fiscal strategy, and also it must root out corruption and uphold transparency and accountability. Thank you.